Good evening, I'm DK Ronsta. Welcome back to the TTT News and Shubh Diwali to you. It is a privilege to be joined by the president of the Hindu women's organization, Kamla Tiwari, on this day celebrating light over darkness. It is time to go in depth with me, DK Ronsta. And a blessed Diwali to you, Ms. Tiwari. How are you doing? I'm doing fine, thank you. And thank you for having me. And I want to ask about the significance of this day to you. Because for some persons, it is more personal. For some, it is more national. For some, it is community. But what is it that really resonates with you? I would like to say Sitaram to all our viewers tonight on this special day of Diwali, hoping it does not rain rain on our parade tonight. What is of significance to the Hindu community in Diwali? I think we have to start with where the pandemic has taken us, where we were when we were growing up, and what happened up to two years ago. And uh, as growing up as a child in the rural village of California, close to the Point Lisa's estate, we had a fabulous time for all festivities by all religions. We, because my father was a pundit and a community leader, all the young people of our street and adjoining streets would gather at our house after lighting their deers at home and come and then we'd put out hundreds of deers. And there was such camaraderie, there was such um, collaboration. There was such fun in who put out the most years and how they take them and who spilled and who burned and all of that. But that was then. And then it moved to the level of community where several communities got together, lit up in an empty lot in a park. I don't think when I mean, when I was that young that we ever did it in parks. Somebody's empty lot across the road or something became the community space. And then we went to the phase where um, parks and uh, public spaces were really um, the gathering space for people of all ethnicities. Um, we see then it moved to the stage where businesses were having people dressed in, in Indian um, attire going out on that day just to ob observe that festival in a multi-ethnic, multi multi-religious society that we are. Um, then we would go to the declaring of the public holiday, which made it, made it more community oriented because people had the time at home to invite and all of that. In our family, we had all the neighbors, uh, non-Hindus, and all our non-Hindu friends come over to the house, have them come at dusk and help with the lighting and you know fraternize and children were running about and, and um, uh, then we had meals that everybody partook of. So then, the, now, there's a, a tradition which does not allow us to light the ears when someone dies in the family. So that's the only time you were supposed to leave your house because you weren't lighting the ears. You probably did a few. Um, as we normally do at dusk in most Hindu homes, inviting Lakshmi, the, the manifestation of God in the form of a woman, into our home. And I remember my father telling my husband when we moved into our home 40 years ago, he said, make sure and light that dear, because that is what helps to expel the negativity and remove the darkness that may be in the home, in personalities and relationships, etc. And we have, and a lot of Hindu homes do follow that tradition. 
Um, and, this, and this is one of the reasons that I really wanted to have this conversation with you, Mr. Wari, being able to have that overview of tradition, that experience. And you, you, you're speaking now, and I'm feeling a bit nostalgic remembering because different, different faith tradition, but at the same time, during the time of Diwali, you, you talk about being from California, from Gasparillo. So actually on the altar, we would have uh, deers instead of candles because the, the, the idea of love and light, light over darkness, is universal. Certainly. Even more so in Trinidad and Tobago, as you said, as there are so many ethnicities, so many cultures, so many ways of life. Well, isn't that a manifestation of what multiculturalism should be? It is. Because moving up to, be, I mean, we do advertise ourselves as a diverse community. And many steps have been made to open up, um, especially Hindu culture and traditions to the bigger, more having moved from the, the barracks and the um, enclaves that we existed in. Now that it is national in scope, um, I, I don't know how much we need to educate and to make our population more sensitive to what traditions we still hold dear and what we practice in our, and in our Hindu way of life. Hinduism is not a religion. It's seen as the way you conduct your life, hoping to walk to, towards God. And that is what basically Hinduism, as practiced by, by the larger number of Hindus, is. There are little sects that have their own peculiarities, but the major part of the 35 point something percent of us are Sanatanis Hindus, and that is what the national population would know. But leading up to this Diwali, several disturbing things happened, and I just want to make mention of a few which really impacted, because one of our core values is speaking up, of, of the Hindu Women's Organization, speaking up on issues that affect us as a community. So we saw the curry queue issue, where meat was advertised. Now we're looking not at the people who organize it, because generally the leader has to take responsibility. The leader may not have seen this, or could have missed it, right? As I first did when I saw the social media chat and stuff, I said, well, what is this, what's going on? And then when I read that there was going to be curry chicken, et cetera, at that point, I'm saying, do people know or are they just disregarding it? And I think it's a bit of both. Secondly is a poultry um, outfit advertised spe Diwali special, chicken breast, X number per pound, this, that. Now, I don't think that that one should have escaped um, scrutiny. Thirdly, we saw the comment in Parliament. I mean, m most people there are very well educated as to the politics, the makeup of the society, etc. And talking about Hindus will go at Diwali Nagar and spend one set of money but they want to pay property tax. I think I'm correct in, I was not here at the time, so I didn't pick up on the news, but I think that's what happened. And what is the difference of me shopping in a mall for Christmas to shopping at Diwali Nagar, which is once a year, which is the type of attire I like to wear and which identifies me as a Hindu. So I think that was very um, out of place. And then we have, I, when I was a teacher, I, there was an exercise where we were inviting the students who were leaving school to come to a forum. And it was a brilliant idea where they could express their feelings, their time spent in school, apologize to someone they may have inadvertently wrong, make up with a classmate, 
you know, apologize to a teacher for, you know, whatever. And I thought it was a really excellent idea by the member, my, my colleague who brought it up. So one day I said, um, I was doing my postgraduate work and I wasn't in school on my spare periods and lunchtime. But I know we had this event coming up, so I checked with one of my colleagues and I said, is it happening this year? And he said, yes, it is. And I said, well, um, who's prepping the Hindu students? Because I conducted the RI sessions with the senior children and generally they'd come to me for a little guidance as to how they make their presentation. But just speaking about that guidance, so we continue this and I want to hear the end of this, but we do it right after we come back from this break. We are speaking with Kamla Tiwari, president of the Hindu Women's Organization. Stay with us. Welcome back. We are going in-depth speaking with Ms. Kamla Tiwari, the president of the Hindu Women's Organization. And just before you go back to the story that we took the break on, Ms. Tiwari, I found I really appreciate that incident that you said happened at school where students may not have had to exchange raksha, but at the same time telling, okay, well, this is how you made me feel. This is the emotions that I had with this action and sharing. And it is in that sharing, in that walking in one's shoes, or someone else's shoes, you come to a level of understanding that helps to dictate the way that you live your life going forward. But I interrupted your apologies. You mm -hmm. were saying that you, you were asking who is going to prepare the Hindu students because you were, you yeah. were in charge of religious instruction, I believe. Right. So I am, um, teachers didn't know what was going on. And then I went down to use the phone in the office and I saw the program on the secretary's desk. I just was on the phone and looking there. Right? And I saw scripture reading, this, that, the other followed this, venue, the, I forget which Methodist church, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I took up the, 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 I said, can I borrow this? I asked the secretary, I said, can I borrow it? Now, it's because I was involved and I was glad I went to make that phone call because I wouldn't have known what was going on until the day it happened. So I took it up to my colleagues and I said, um, is anybody involved in this program or was this you know, a consultation as to how who makes an input? Now in Trunapuna, I would say a good 40% of our students were Hindu students. There was a small number of Muslims, so nobody knew anything about it. I took the program, I went, I knocked at the principal's door and I said, um, could I have a minute with you? And I said, you know, I ju I'm just watching this. I haven't been around much in my spare periods because you know I'm studying and I have projects to hand. But um, what, what, what is happening here? So she said, well, the church will not allow the, the Hindu contribution. I said, no, the Muslim. And she said, no. I said, well, I don't know. I think that we have to find a venue to suit our program and not make our program suit a venue. I mean, that's not the only thing. She said, well, actually, this came to my attention late, and we're planning next year to go to Amandir. And so, and so I say, you're missing the point, you know. We will go in any church and any masjid, because Hinduism is an all-embracing religion. But if somebody cannot accommodate our students, why are they going to be there? And what are we doing there? And why, when I uh, um, fraternize with my senior students, I'm telling them, respect for all. You know, everybody has their own practices, call God by different names. I said, that is not in keeping with what I have been trying to build in my students. And I find it. Well. So the next day I come to school, well, the te our Sindhu teachers decided we're not going to go to the program. I called a senior student leading the other, and I said, I want you to um, go home and discuss with your parents this, what is happening. You are not invited to be part of this ceremony. You're going to attend like anybody else, and if so many other groups are invited to present, what, what, what is the purpose? So um, she said, the person I spoke to, she said, Miss, but I'm chairing the program. I said, okay, you have to do something now. Go and tell the teacher you're working with 
that your group is not in included. You, you, you know you said you do this and you're being practicing, but you can't do it because you have to be um, supporting your Hindu group. So then the teacher stopped talking to me. The principal stopped talking to me. And we came the next day. The teacher decided we're not going to the church. We come into work, sign in the register, marking papers, preparing lessons, whatever it is we were supposed to do, full day work. When we came to the, to school, the book wasn't there. Now, that is against regulations. That book is not supposed to leave the compound. That's one. Next, we say, okay, we'll sign tomorrow and so you're, saying, you're saying that somebody almost like they kidnapped the book? We, they took the book to the church. It, it, that, but this reminds me some kind of um, something that Maya Angelou says. She said, do the best that you can, and when you know better, do better. Because I'm guilty of something like that as well. I remember I was the president of a, a student's uh, association. Yeah. And I said, okay, well, we're going to have an interfaith service. Mm -hmm. And we got the space at the chapel. Right. But somebody pulled me aside, and I'm very grateful to her. Yeah. And she said, DK, like, having it at the chapel, that already, that is a power dynamic. And you're crossing that line. And I'll be like, you know, it never occurred to me. So mm -hmm. we had it in a more general space. Right. I mean, because prayers of each denomination, of yeah. e denominational yeah. prayers were going to be offered, were going to be shared, right. but at the same time, just in that physical space, right. because there's a certain kind of energy there. Right. And we've seen movements in terms of the, the Trinity Cross being changed mm -hmm. to the Order of Trinidad and Tobago, what? and that is the role of education one, and right. being open to that level right. of education and sharing. Right. But with that in mind though, what is the role of the Hindu women's group? The, we um, our mission really is to focus on women and girls. And of course we, we do things from the Hindu perspective, but not necessarily absolutely Hindu. It is women and girls. And we try to get involved in the issues impacting, like our, one of our former president was involved in the Marriage Act where you know what marriage age was. And she just got an award from the Coalition of Domestic Violence um, for her input into getting this um, up to the level of national, um, a, a national audience, petitions, um, AG, parliament, etc. And with, and with the final minute that we have, just want you to send your greetings or any other closing statements that you'd want on this day, Mr. Tiwari. Okay, so my, my personal now, because I mean, I haven't done this together with the group, is that, you know, part of the story of, of Diwali has to do with Ram, our leader, our king, our ruler, who led by example. He, we are hoping that all our leaders at all dif different levels, because when we think leaders, we look up there. I am a leader in my group. I was a leader in my classroom, etc. So we're looking at community groups, regional cooperation, wh wherever we are. I'm looking, I'm hoping and praying that we look at our duty and obligation to the people we say we represent in a non-discriminatory fashion. And I am hoping and praying too that we embrace in our leadership roles, embrace ethical and moral values based on truth, which in Hindi is Sat, and we are bound by the oaths we take when we assume these roles as leaders. And that will take Trinidad and Tobago very far. Uh, one more thing in terms of education and sensitizing. You know, when we go to a function, we, we expect a, a universal prayer. And I always comment, universal prayers need to be paid attention to. We have no our father in our religion, and there can be no hegemony, which there has been for a long time, by the Christian dominance coming from, you know, our history. Now to say, dear God, all of our, whatever name we call it by, 
and not uh, end. I mean, if we say peace, that is a, a word that we all hope for. So instead of the this and the that and the that, universal prayers have to include all in that room and all who are listening and um, viewing. And if that were to happen, that's a lot of sensitization. I want to thank you so much, Mr. Tiwari, Kamala Tiwari, President of the Hindu Women's Organization. And I say with the strength of my hand, the intelligence of my mind, and all the love in my heart, thank you for coming. And on behalf of the entire TTT news team, we want to thank you for joining us on this very special evening.